And we're literally seeing an epidemic of these issues in the United States right now. Dr. Robert Melillo is the co-founder of Brain Balance Centers. One out of every 10 children in the United States now is diagnosed with ADHD. And that's a real increase. My name is Dr. Robert Melillo. My life's mission is to help kids and families with special needs. My wife, Carolyn, makes it all possible. Welcome to our family. Hello everyone, welcome to the Dr. Rob Show. I'm your host, Dr. Rob Melillo. This is my wife, Carolyn. Carolyn, in my 25 years of experience as a clinician, university professor, brain researcher, and author of many scientific papers and several books on autism spectrum disorders, including Disconnected Kids, Reconnected Kids, and Autism, the Scientific Truth about Preventing, Diagnosing, and Treating Autism Spectrum Disorders, I've heard all kinds of questions from people in all walks of life, like, what is autism, ADHD, dyslexia, OCD, fragile X syndrome, Down syndrome? Why do some people have a harder time socializing than others? Why is my child struggling in school? And most importantly, can anything be done to help my child learn and socialize? And then you hear all kinds of comments that try to explain or dismiss the behaviors like, the child isn't disciplined or he or, too, or she has too much sugar in their diet and that's why they're hyper and comments like, you know, they're an adult, they should know how to act like an adult. But these disorders in the autism spectrum are very real and they're very difficult to deal with for everyone in the family. That's very true. Did you know that autism right now affects one in 50 children in the United States? Uh, it's not just children, it's also adults. 30 years ago, it was one in 10,000. It's the wow. fastest growing developmental disorder in the United States. But there is help out there for everyone and there's information. Absolutely, we know that autism is caused by an imbalance in the brain. If you stimulate the entire body with medications, you're only treating the symptoms temporarily, but not the problem. Brain balance focuses on the weaker side, strengthening it, that's a tough word, strengthening it until it fully connects with the stronger side, functioning as a whole permanently. That's what this show is about. Raising awareness, awareness of facts like that ADHD is the leading childhood disorder in the world. It's also the fastest growing adult disorder in the world. 75% of all medications that are prescribed are actually ADHD medications. Wow. One in nine children are affected. One in seven children have a learning disability like dyslexia. Uh, we see that right now in the United States this year, one in four children born this year are going to have some sort of de de developmental disability. This is a, the largest childhood epidemic. This is the most important social issue of our time, and nobody is giving this information out there in the mainstream media, certainly, to these parents, and that's what our show is all about. It's unbelievable. So later on in the show, we're going to meet Sue Sullivan. Sue's son, Danny, struggles with autism. He ha he's had great difficulty in transitioning in certain new situations, and sometimes he would have emotional outbursts, which is common. Many people assume when they see this that this may be the result of bad parenting, and in fact, it's not. It's a neurological condition, and it's very real, and it's like ADHD, Asperger's, OCD, and Tourette's, and it's the result of a right hemisphere delay, and it's almost always diagnosed with one of these three other issues because they're really the same neurological issue. What we see is, again, when we look at things like ADHD, 70% of children with ADHD are always diagnosed with at least one or two other labels and that's most commonly OCD and Tourette's because it's really the same thing because what, ADA, what the right brain does is really suppress certain behaviors and the left brain is really about creating more obsessions and compulsions and we'll talk more about that. And as you can imagine, this disorder can be very difficult if not just for the one who's diagnosed, quite often it's even worse for the people around them, him or her, especially the parents. Rob, it, it can be especially difficult on parents with young children with this disorder. Moms and dads, especially moms, tend to put their children's needs first and not think about their own needs. It's so important for parents not to forget about themselves. So to help, I've decided to treat Sue to a makeover, a mom boost. Okay, well hold that thought, Carolyn, because we need to take a break right now. Uh, but stick around because after the break, Carolyn will, will talk to Sue and, about, and do a makeover. And then later in the show, I'll have a chance to really sit down with Sue and speak with her about her son Danny, how he was diagnosed, what courses of action they took, uh, and how Danny is doing today. So stick around. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Dr. Rob Show. I'm Carolyn Melillo, and joining me is Sue Sullivan. Sue's son Danny struggles with autism. With all of her attention on helping Danny, she forgot about the most important thing, to take care of herself. So Sue, how did you like this whole experience? Oh, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Now, I but, felt like I was winning a beauty pageant. <laughs> oh, well, you're so beautiful. You probably would win. <laughs> Um, what, what was your normal um, go-to outfit when you would leave the house? Jeans or sweats, eh. t-shirt, okay. <laughs> sneakers, no, no, no. especially things that flip-flops. <laughs> okay, flip-flops are okay. I mean, those are okay, but um, we now found leggings, which I have to say have this beautiful leather detail, and I, I believe when I first picked them up, you giggled a little bit, and, and what did you think when you saw them? But oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> not something you would normally Correct. choose. And yet, do they not feel like a pair of sweatpants? They are so comfortable. So, so comfortable, easy, breezy, on, off, done, go, ready, right. and I look good. And you look beautiful. <laughs> we have a little bit of color. We have a jacket, which is something you can just throw on with a pair of jeans, just like a sweatshirt. We got um, same thing with this sweater, a little bit of color, things to throw on. Everything goes together. Everything could be mixed and matched. These pants at H&M were originally $40 down to $9.99. Right now, you can shop at Target. You can shop at Old Navy. Everything is fashionable. We put together an entire wardrobe for you for under $250, which is about $20 a month if you wanted to think about yourself for once and go out shopping. And um, how do you like your makeup? It was really easy. I love it. I really love it. And how long did it take? I don't know, less than a few minutes. Less than a few minutes. <laughs> how did I not do it before? <laughs> right, and you, you know, it's just a little pick-me-up. When you look like you care, other people notice. And, and it makes a difference. And your, your kids say, hey, Mom, you look beautiful. And you feel a little better starting your day, right? Definitely. So do you think this is, is something now you'll go to? And, and do you think this is easy? And Oh, definitely, yes. And it's comfortable. That's the not just easy, it's great to just throw on and go. I can't say thank you enough. It's just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Well, you were a perfect model, and we <laughs> will join Rob after the break and talk about her son's behavioral disorders have improved since going to Brain Balance. So thank you so much, Sue. Thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Robin Lolo, and I'm joined by very attractive Sue, Sue Sullivan. <laughs> Sue's son Danny struggled with autism. What most people don't do is really understand what, brain, what, what the brain is and how it develops. And what most people don't realize is that when we're born, we don't really have a brain. Uh, we only have about 25% of our brain there when we're born. But yet, in the first three years, it'll go from 25% to 90% of the adult size. So there's this explosion of growth. And what's happening is primarily we're building connections in the brain, and especially connections between the two sides of the brain. Now, the way that the brain grows, though, is it needs to be stimulated to grow. How does it grow? It grows mainly because of movement, because as the baby starts to move, it actually stimulates the brain and also engages our senses which then further stimulate the brain and that causes it to develop. So how do we move when we don't have a brain to move us? In our brain stem we're born with things called primitive reflexes or infantile reflexes. And these reflexes allow the baby to initially breastfeed, grab on, roll over, crawl, and eventually to get up and start walking. And so what we know is that many of the children that we work with have problems in those early motor milestones. And that's one of the earliest signs for parents if, if their child has a brain imbalance is, you know, did they meet those milestones? Did they crawl normally? It's very, very important. So what we see is that these reflexes need to go away so that the brain can develop. And most of the children that we deal with still have a lot of these primitive reflexes, which means that their brain didn't develop and during that early two to three year window is where, really when the right brain is developing. So with that in mind, we want to thank Sue for being here and talk to you about your, your son, Danny, and um, talk about his specific issues. So um, tell us about Danny, about his diagnosis, when you, when you found out and what you did early on. Basically, after about a year, we started to notice some delays. Things just weren't 
he's our second son, so just weren't matching up to what we had seen previously with our first. By 15 months, we went ahead and brought it to the pediatrician's attention, uh, and they kind of just brushed us off. Right. He's number two, he's a boy, give right. him time, etc. So at that point, we did, we waited it out. 18 months rolled around, same thing, his verbal skills continued to regress and uh, he started to get sick a lot. Um, strep throat, at this point he already had ear tubes, um, more infections ensued after that, bronchitis. You said that he had digestive issues as well early on, yes, constipation, things like that. Very colicky and yeah. not the typical colic. It, it lasted for almost a year with just issues, uncomfortable all the time, gas issues all the time. And that's important because we know that in, especially in autism, that it's almost always associated with, with problems with the gut and with the immune system. And for years, people thought it was just coincidental. Now we know it's actually part of the problem. And really, these problems start in the brain, which very few people, almost no doctors actually know or understand. So when they finally agreed with us to pursue interventional, uh, early intervention, they came out and said, you know, drop the bomb of, we think he's autistic. Uh, from that point forward, we dove in head first, trying to find right doctors, uh, right therapies, uh, fighting for our lives to get him some kind yeah. of uh, a treatment plan, basically. And I think it's important to know that you're a surgical nurse, so you have a lot of medical knowledge yourself. You have a lot of access to doctors and medical uh, information. And so you're not the run of the mill mom, but were you given any answers? Did you have any idea what actually autism was in the brain? No. None whatsoever? No. So uh, we know that you had told me that you did some genetic testing down the road, and what did you find out? That he didn't have any of the typical problems that, or DNA that would flash up and say. So there was no gene mutation or anything like that. Correct. Which again, a lot of people are told that these are genetic mutations, there's nothing you can do about it, and they're not told anything of what's actually happening in the brain, and that's exactly what happened to you, but you found out it wasn't genetic and that gave you some hope. So Absolutely. what we should know is that you know most people don't have these genetic issues. Um, so you did a lot of different interventions and some of the things helped. Nothing really made a big dramatic problem, but especially Danny was really struggling with speech, with verbal language and nonverbal language. Correct. So how did you find out about brain balance? Uh, after going through so many different programs and uh, the most recent one that we had been involved in was ready to discharge him. And we felt that he really hadn't had been helped at all. He still wasn't speaking well. He still wasn't cognitively aware of what was going on around him. Right. I just started plugging in help <laughs> and autism and pretty much programs, therapies, etc. Brain balance popped up and it's literally down the road from us so we're so very lucky to so have you so close. How has the program helped you where other programs or interventions hasn't helped? What are some of the most dramatic things? What was When they went there, what was one of the first things they told you that really surprised you? Uh, basically, that he, it, it was a holistic program, one. It wasn't just focusing on his speech. It just wasn't focusing on his, his behavior. It, it was putting all those things together and taking it forward from that point. And they told you that he had these primitive reflexes, which shocked you, right? Oh, man. When they sat us down and said every single one of the primitive reflexes were still intact and full throttle in Danny, all I could think of was, how is that possible? Right. And, you know, it's important to know that that is actually supposed to be part of a textbook pediatric neurology exam. So these are things that, you know, typically should be done. So, you know, we were able to get some answers. So what were some of the changes that you saw? Uh, he was much more engaging, uh, much more able to put sentences together. It wasn't just one-word responses anymore. I, I was getting, uh, my shoes are in the basement. All right, okay, I didn't know that <laughs> could come out of your mouth, but and it was just a newer kid. It, it was there all along, but stuck, and it was finally coming out. Right, so that, that must have made you feel unbelievable, and I'm sure your husband was very happy. Yes. 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 So, you know, for, I think the main message we want to get across is that many parents are, are under the belief that there's not much that can be done. They're told that there's really not a lot of hope. And you're here as a message of hope to those people to show that 
things can change, things can get better. Even with a diagnosis of autism, there can be significant improvement. Absolutely, it's, it's work from you guys, it's work from us, and with that team effort, it's, it's just winning for Danny, and we, we can't thank you guys enough. Oh, well, you know, like I said, it's, it's important that it's not just about brain balance and what we do, it's important that parents know that there are many different programs out there that can be helpful and really uh, can move forward and there is hope. So thank you very much and thank you for Danny. Thank you. Um, because coming up next, what we're going to do is speak with Carolyn and I'll be headed into the kitchen with uh, delicious meals with vegan chef Deb Finneran. We'll be right back. Come back soon. Welcome back to the Dr. Rob Show. I'm Dr. Rob Melillo. Joining me is my wife, Carolyn, and vegan chef, Deb Finneran. Now, as we've talked about before in special needs families, one of the biggest issues are food issues. Trying to get children to eat healthy, uh, to eat vegetables is one of the most difficult things to try to get protein into them. Uh, so this is a real issue as well as the food sensitivities that they have. So uh, Deb is here today to show us some delicious vegan gluten-free uh, meals. So let's get right to it. And we're going to start with dessert first. Yay. Yes, we are. You never know what could happen between dinner and dessert. So we're going to start with the good part. Actually, the reason I'm doing this is because this is a parent and child participation activity. Um, the children can actually get into this. So Carol is the child. Okay. okay. Oh, Robert. <laughs> there are two ways to prepare this dish. They're called asteroids. Um, it is a combination of a sun butter, which is sunflower seed butter, which is al allergen friendly, uh, brown rice syrup, which mm. is, I've chosen the maple flavored brown rice syrup. Mm, I like it already. And it's starting to sizzle a little, yeah. it's getting nice and warm. And then we have dairy free, soy free, nut free uh, chocolate chips. Wow. Fantastic. Which we're gonna add in, and this is all gonna melt together. This is the parent good. part, because we don't want the children to get burned. And then what I'm going to do is take this off and set it aside. Now everything's incorporated and melted. It does that rather quickly. Um, oh, that was fast. It That's smells good. It looks it good. It smells great. And, and it's amazing because dairy-free, um, egg-free you said too, and gluten-free yes. and yes. nut-free. I mean, it's fantastic. It's great yes. for everybody. Yes, it is. And then you're going to add the gluten-free gluten crisped rice cereal. And it's going to be like a Rice Krispie treat, oh only my goodness. many, many times better. Mm, so now that good. we've prepared this, we're going to let it set aside for a little while. And this is what you're going to want to do is to test it to make sure it's not too warm before your children actually get into it. Two ways you can do it. You can actually put it into a pan and cut it after it's refrigerated or a little bit. Can we just put our finger in it? No. <laughs> not yet oh, now. Okay. You, you have to have We're making this later, by the way. <laughs> That's so, right. Know. Absolutely. That's right. So we're going to let this cool down a little bit while I show you a really quick, easy main Great. dish. Fantastic. So I'm going to switch my pots here. Okay. And as that cools so that it gets to a temperature that a child could handle. Let me know what I can help you with here. And, okay. We're going to start off with some extra virgin olive oil cold pressed. And we're just going to put a little bit of that in the pan for this easy, simple you love meal. Carolyn is an mm -hmm. olive oil fanatic. I think it really it makes such a difference in your health. That's why the Europeans are, are so healthy and, and work until they're very, very old because of the olives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I've already prepared the noodles because they take a little while, so I wanted to get those done ahead. But what I'll do is I'll put in the onions. We're going to saute some onions. Delicious. So I'm going to let that warm up a little bit. I'm sorry right. if I start crying. Uh, oh, I'm no. in person too. No, no crying here. What I'm going to do, that's why I didn't choose to demonstrate some cutting skills on the set because I didn't want anyone to cry. So what we're going to do is just take some organic celery and we're just going to slice this. Now what I do is I play with my grandchildren a lot. Uh, we play hide and sneak. And it's because kids don't like vegetables so much, if you entice them to try them uh, when you're not looking or try them when they think they're not supposed to be snitching, that's a good game. So maybe I'll take a piece of celery or green bean or edamame is one of my favorites. I have some today. Yeah, kids love that. And I'll put it on the edge of the table and I'll take a bite and then put it back and just walk away. And they'll come in the kitchen and 
they'll sneak and they'll laugh and they'll take it and run in the other room. That's great. And sometimes I'll have a whole portion of vegetables finished before the meal even starts, but at least they've consumed their vegetables. Well, that's a great tip because, again, we find that, you know, most of the families that we deal with, they really struggle with getting kids to eat vegetables. That's a big, big issue. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this way the child has already tasted it and when they say, ooh, what's that? You can say, well, that's what we were just eating off the table. Right. And it was so good. And I bet celery dipped in that that uh, safflower, sunflower, the sunflower seed butter would be delicious. Absolutely, absolutely. And if they can have currants, you can put a little currant on there, and I think they call that ants on a log. Okay. All right, I'm going to start exactly handing you Thank over you. some things. Thank you. So I'm going to add in some more celery here that I've dealt with at home, and a little bit of sliced carrots. Are these organic vegetables? Yes, they are. Oh, that's yes, very important, are. right? Well. I don't like to see pesticides in anybody's body, and especially a young, growing child. They, don't, they really don't need to deal with that either. So I would really prefer organics. And there are lists of the dirty dozen, the things that are most highly pesticided. Okay. And if you look that up, you'll see okay. that you know kale, collard greens, strawberries, apples, things like that are on that list. And those and are the you things you really want to yeah. find. Now we're, 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 almost, um, we're almost done with this segment, so we yeah, really so want to be able to get to this uh, yeah, so that we can. Yeah, let's put all this in. Okay. So now we got gluten-free noodles as well that we're going to have in there, which yes, is fantastic. Yes, we do. We're going to put in some more colors here. With oh, the and a mommy, oh, I'm beautiful. spilling, I'm That's making right. mess, but I'll right be the I'm the kid. I'm allowed to do that. And sorry. those tomatoes? Yes, they are, my, they are organic tomatoes. Look and we let this saute and sizzle a little bit, and then you just add in the noodles. Oh, that and looks, voila. That looks, that looks incredible, Thank actually. you so much. What You're a beautiful, welcome. beautiful dish. And it's simple, and the children, my grandchildren, exa for example, love this meal with the, all the vegetables, the colorful vegetables, and the edamame. Okay. Well, Carolyn and I are going to be e eating this for a while. We want to thank Carolyn, and we want to thank <laughs> Deb Finneran especially. Thank you so your, much. Your uh, name of your business is? Good Choice. Good Choice, so you can look her up. And we want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank all of you at home for joining us. Don't forget to tune in next time when we share another Brain Balance Achievement Center success story. Until then, thanks for watching, and remember there's always hope.